Welcome back to the second part of our conversation with Larry Levin. Larry, could you tell me a little bit about, you know, the difference between uh, big companies and small companies and the ideas around the new product and innovation? Sure. Well, first, Jessica, thanks for having us back again. It's great to, <laughs> great to be back. Um, I've, I've always been intrigued by the successes of big companies and small companies in their ability to get new products out there. I think there's a misnomer that new product innovation is for big companies only. And done a lot of studying over the last few years where David could really slew Goliath. And this is just another typical year where smaller, more nimble companies have been able to surprise the market with some great products. You know, in our earlier discussion, we talked a lot about Talking Rain and Sparkling Ice. To me, that was the epitome of a David slewing Goliath with, with the successes. And again, not supported by much advertising, but they, uh, that's just one David. I mean, there's, a, there's a lot of them out there. And, and in fact, this past year in Paysetters, 16 small companies out of 100 brought Paysetters, uh, beverage Paysetters, to the marketplace. So that's a phenomenal performance. It generated about $880 million in first year revenue. And I believe that the average was somewhere about $55 million. So again, it, it was small companies listening to consumers and, and being nimble and getting out to the market. And it was companies like Buddy's Fruit, it was uh, one coconut water, uh, you know, one of the big growth areas that we've seen over the last few years is around plant-based milk and plant-based plant milk waters. One certainly satisfied that area uh, with, with Dean's and True Mood chocolate milk. You know, even though Dean's is a relatively large national dairy, it's still small relative to some of the other manufacturers that are out there. And Dean's found the niche for chocolate milk and, and moms bought it because they wanted to give their their kids a good for you indulgent treat, and then, uh, you know, as we talked in the last edition, also about Starbucks. Starbucks, even though it's a huge multinational company to us from a retail point of view, it's really a baby when it comes to CPG. It's only been in the CPG world for a couple of years, and Starbucks was able to, you know, bring the market a huge win with with its K cups, and there's more on the horizon coming from Starbucks. So again, I, I think. Small companies can really make it happen, and it's a message really to the small innovator. Take your chance, listen to your consumer. You got a good chance. You got a real good chance. Larry, I'd like to shift gears a little bit and talk about the channels. How do you see the C-Store channel playing a role in new product launches? Yeah, C-Store is a really important channel, and oftentimes when we look at paysetters, we're thinking about it from the multi-outlet, which includes Food Drug Mass, Walmart, and Club, but we're not talking about C-Store. So when you take C-Store as its own little laboratory, it's really a critically important area for new product innovation, and particularly in beverages, because you've got certain categories that fit beautifully in C-Store. Energy drinks really leads the list. Monster uh, Rehab Recovery was one of the top pace setters, uh, I think it was the number two pace setter last year, in the beverage world because of C-Store. Or you take a product like Bud Light Platinum, which in and of itself was the number three pace setter in the Mulo view in the number two beverage. It was the number one overall, and it was quote unquote a rock star in that there was over $260 million coming for Bud Light Platinum through that channel. That alone made it the biggest pace setter. And so it, it's, it really provides a great opportunity to try new, try bring new products to the market because it's so much, there's so much single serve, and it's an opportunity for me as a consumer to try something new with a relatively small investment of a couple dollars. I can go try a new product. If I like it, I can go to a bigger box and buy it, buy it in, a new, in another channel in a much bigger pack size. Great, and could you tell me what can brand owners really learn from their brands and apply that to their new product launches going forward? Well, it, it's really important to know your plan, stick to your plan and getting your forecasting models aligned, understanding your distribution builds, understanding the tri the channels you're going to use first are really, really critical. Having your media support that's going to drive it. Understand how to dice your media because we're, we're finding right now that about 20% of the dollars are being associated with digital media. Now, that may change depending upon the profile of the consumer you're going for. If you have a product like an energy drink, you may want 80% of your media going digital. But getting your media right, getting your distribution right, 
is, is really, really critical to start to build the trial. Because the worst thing that can happen is for a manufacturer to start to advertise and promote a new product and make it sound like it's available everywhere and anywhere, and then I go to the store and I, want to, and I can't find it. Now for some products, that's a death wish right away. Because for some people, the idea of buying the new product is really inspiring, but it's not game changing. It's not like I'm going to go out of my way to find the product, so if it's not there, I'll sacrifice. In other cases, though, we find that if, if a product's not there, and people see that it's going to be something really good in their lives, and I'll use Chobani yogurt as a classic example. When Chobani launched its yogurt in uh, 2009 and 10, distribution numbers were pretty small, but people went out of their way to find the product. And, and to me, it built the same mania like Beetle Mania. People went out of their way to, to find this product, and they were also willing to pay more money for it. They were willing to pay 40 cents more a serving. So it showed that value for the money doesn't mean cheap. Value for the money means make my life easier, make, make, make my life better, and I'll go out of my way to find it. Another product to me that was like that was wonderful, pistachio nuts. That was another big pace setter that had limited distribution in the mid-50s, but people saw the health benefit of pistachio nuts along with the fun of eating pistachio nuts and, and wonderful and its advertising also made it fun. So people went out of their way to go find that product and it, it became a big success. Now the other thing that's really important is not just hitting the mark in year one but you also have to plan for year two and so often we tend to find manufacturers aren't getting ready for the second year because they're not supporting it with enough advertising, they're not spicing up the product lineup with new varieties. They're not building their distribution. So as a result, our data show, and it's been very stable over years, is that 30% of products lose at least 30%, 30 points of distribution in the second year. And when you think about all the money that manufacturers spend to create innovation, it's really a horrible assessment that we're not supporting our babies well enough in the second year and so we should cradle our innovations from the time they launch until at least the end of the second year because we need to protect the investment and remind ourselves that for a lot of people trial starts in the second year my demand moment may not have hit me in the first year so in the second year something came up I really want to try the product and off we go Wow, Larry, you've given us a lot of information to go through today. You know, what do you think is really on the horizon for new products, particularly with beverages? I, I think we're going to continue to see the love and the passion around K-Cups. Right now, about 20% of households have a K-Cup machine. We think that's going to con continue to grow maybe out to 25%. So coffee manufacturers and tea manufacturers are going to continue to give us products that we can make. Regular coffee, hot coffee, hot cocoa cold drinks, I, th I think that evolution will continue because for a lot of people they like the idea of salon style coffee at home. This gives me an opportunity to have a fancy cup of coffee with the flavor I want, when I want. Even though it's a little bit more than drip coffee, it's certainly a lot cheaper than going to my local coffee salon. So I, I think that phenomenon will continue. And then we have the curiosity behind the relationship that's forming between Keurig and Campbell's and Campbell's thinking outside the soup container if you will and thinking about soup and K-cups and that is such an intriguing idea because it is a whole new way for current users to use the K-cup machine and secondarily I think it's a way to sell more K-cup machines to people who may not be coffee drinkers or tea drinkers but think that Soup in a K-cup is a great way for me to have soup on the go. And, and so it's going to be really interesting to see how that goes and, and even where Campbell's and Keurig end up putting the product. Is it going to be a product that sits on, in the coffee aisle or is it going to be something that sits in the soup aisle? Is it going to be where K-cups, regardless if I'm a, a coffee, a soup, a, a tea, K-cups become the category dependent variable or is it going to be soup is soup and it belongs where, where I would normally buy soup. So it'll be interesting to see how that evolves. I think we're also going to continue to see more of a growth around drinks that can become meals and smoothies are a perfect example of that. Um, you know, Kellogg's has had smoothies under the Special K 
logo. We know Florida's Natural's coming out with smoothies. So smoothies are great because they're, they're filling. They're, a lot of them have a lot of protein in them. Um, they give me the variety because I've got any kind of fruit flavors I can imagine. So I, I think that's another great way for me to substitute a regular meal, something I can have on the fly. So a place to convenience, a place to health and wellness, a place to good for you. Well, I'll look forward to seeing what pops up on the radar next. No pun intended, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And thank you so much for watching.